getting the severity calculation wrong could mean the difference between a treatment being funded by the NHS or not. In this video, I'll show you exactly how to work out whether the NICE severity modifier applies in your case. In 2022, NICE rolled out the severity modifier, taking over from the old end-of-life criteria. The key difference is its broader perspective. It's not restricted to terminal illnesses. Instead, it considers any condition where the expected future health loss is substantial. If a treatment targets a condition that is considered highly severe, the qualities it delivers can be multiplied by a weight, either 1.2 or 1.7, before comparing against NICE's cost-effectiveness thresholds. This can make the difference between a recommendation and a rejection. NICE defines severity based on future health lost under current standard of care in the NHS. That's measured in two ways. First, absolute quality shortfall. The total future health in qualities that people with the condition will miss out on compared with people of the same age and sex in the general population. Second, proportional quality shortfall. That same shortfall expressed as a percentage of what the general population would expect. Both measures are calculated using quality and length of life data. The higher of the two, either absolute or proportional shortfall, determines the severity level. Here's how the weighting works. If the proportional shortfall is less than 0.85, or the absolute shortfall is less than 12 qualities, no extra weight is applied. If the proportional shortfall is between 0.85 and 0.95, or the absolute shortfall is between 12 and 18 qualities, the qualities are multiplied by 1.2. And if the proportional shortfall is 0.95 or higher, or the absolute shortfall is at least 18 qualities, the qualities are multiplied by 1.7. NICE will always apply whichever of the two measures gives the higher weight. Now, why does the severity modifier actually matter? Well, the main thing NICE focuses on when making a decision is the incremental cost effectiveness ratio, or ISA. The ISA estimates how much a medicine costs to provide one quality, a quality adjusted life year, which you can think of as one additional year in perfect health. Typically, NICE considers a medicine to be cost effective for the NHS if it costs between 20 and 30,000 pounds per quality. Here's where the severity modifier comes in. It increases the value of the qualities provided by the medicine. In other words, if a treatment targets a severe disease, NICE is prepared to pay more for it. By applying a severity weighting, the ISA is effectively reduced, making the medicine appear more cost-effective. With that in mind, let's go through a practical example of how the severity modifier is calculated. Imagine patients with a certain condition are expected to live the rest of their lives with a total of seven qualities under standard of care. People of the same age and sex in the general population would expect 20 qualities. The absolute shortfall is calculated as 20 minus seven, which gives 13 qualities. The proportional shortfall is the absolute shortfall divided by the general population qualities. So 13 divided by 20, which is 0.65 or 65%. Now looking at the table, an absolute shortfall of 13 falls in the 12 to 18 range, giving a weight of 1.2. The proportional shortfall of 0.65 is below 0.85, which gives a weight of one. Since NICE always takes the higher of the two, this treatment would get a severity weight of 1.2. That means each quality the treatment generates is valued 20% higher in the cost effectiveness calculation. But while this approach sounds straightforward and promising, the adoption of the NICE severity modifier hasn't been received without criticism. When it was first introduced, NICE aimed for it to be opportunity cost neutral. In other words, all else being equal, the total value delivered by the severity modifier should be the same as what was provided under the previous end-of-life modifier. The idea was that, financially, it shouldn't cost the NHS any more money, or any less, than the old system. However, this strict approach wasn't really necessary. The NHS medicine budget is already capped under the VPAC, the Voluntary Scheme for Branded Medicine Pricing and Access, which sets spending limits between the government and the pharmaceutical industry. Under VPAC, any branded medicine's expenditure above the agreed cap is repaid by industry in the form of rebates, effectively ensuring overall cost neutrality. There are some concerning data points as well. According to the ABPI's Coney report, oncology medicines now receive around 
8.9% less weighting under the severity modifier compared to what they would have under the previous end of life criteria. This means that some treatments which would have been recommended before could now face rejection. On the other hand, NICE own data presents a more positive picture, showing more favorable recommendation decisions for advanced cancer treatments under the new modifier. Ultimately, the way the severity modifier compares to the old end-of-life mechanism is something that will need ongoing monitoring as more data is gathered under the new approach. To recap, the severity modifier adds extra weight to health gains for the most severe conditions. Severity is measured using absolute and proportional quality shortfalls, and NICE always applies the higher weighting from either measure, so 1, 1.2 or 1.7. For patients, this can make the difference between getting access to a treatment or not having access. And for health economists, it's a key factor to consider when building the evidence case for a new medicine. If you're interested in how other countries apply decision modifiers, then click on the video you can see on your screen where I compare various HDA systems and their approaches.